thank you for joining and welcome to the Wigit Motivational Cafe, celebrating Women Entrepreneurship Day. Uh, this webinar is part of the Pure Learning Series, initiated by the WeGate Project, where women entrepreneurs share their knowledge, their passion, and challenges. I am Elena Stojanovic. I will be your moderator today. I'm also part of the WeGate Project team. WeGate uh, stands for supporting women entrepreneurs to start and build their business across Europe. The WeGate platform is open for all women entrepreneurship supporting organizations and women entrepreneurs who want to become part of this family with plenty of resources, learning materials, and peer learning events available. As an umbrella organization, it unites all organizations, investors, donors, accelerators to promote entrepreneurship. The Community Council was established, gathering top movers in different fields of women entrepreneurship support in order to increase impact and bring more dynamic role to the community. So if you haven't uh, registered already, please uh, check it out. The link will be posted in the uh, chat so you can explore more on the WeGate services and initiatives. But today we are here to show you that uh, WeGate cares for women entrepreneurs and uh, supports not only the intellectual or the business side of entrepreneurship, but also the other side, the emotional and motivational, especially in these challenging times when we feel really isolated and alone. The burden of the pandemic falls mostly on women, women's shoulders. They are the ones staying at home, working and taking care of families at the same time. We need additional support, someone who understands what we're going through and guide us through the process. That's why today uh, is uh, with us is Melita Zepin, founder of Wella, an organization for women's founders emotional care. She is a transaction analyst, a social psychologist in the field of education and organizations, and she advocates for equal economic opportunities and supports women entrepreneurs. During the first part of the webinar, she will share more on how to stay motivated during your entrepreneurial journey, while the second part will be dedicated to sharing your stories and receive feedback from Melita. Melita, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. So hi from my side. I am, um, I'm sitting in Austria. I'm from Slovenia. So to make this clear, so your imagination will not go high, high up. Um, well, we were talking with the WeGate team, what would be needed, what we should do, and what would be really motivational and inspirational to share. And then we said, okay, what if we um, tackle down the motivation itself? So what it is, how it works, and why do we need it to actually get to our goals? And from, from my perspective, everything is very complex. So, you know, human beings are complex, uh, relationships are complex, entrepreneurship is complex. So there is no single answer to the complexity of situations or, or problems. And today we will look at the one way of how we can look at motivation or one of the checkpoints where we can go when we start to be uh, agitated, frustrated, uh, when conflicts come to mind and when willingness to continue is dropping down. And um, transactional anal analyst, uh, Dr. Byrne, was talking about something that is so, that, that is very important, of course, it's a biopsychological needs. And he put it three of them as a top, top, um, as, a, as a most important psychological needs that are connection to our biology and we are born with. And I would ask, you will get in the chat the cheat sheet. Uh, you can look there and there's, it's a, just one A4 so you can remember what we were talking about today. You can download it. And right now while I talk, you can look at it so you will have the orientation while I talk. So he said the infant is born, so he realized in his work that the infant is born and the infant needs a lot of stimulus in order to survive and thrive, which means 
needs a lot. What we do with the, the babies is giving them different colors of toys. We, we do some kind of faces and all this. It's stimulating cognitively, emotionally, physically to develop. And as we grow up, this, uh, so he, he named the psychological needs the hungers because he was uh, arguing that those needs are as important to survive as hunger is. So stimulating hunger. As adults, we need to be stimulated in order to continue to do, to wake up in the morning, meaning stimulated cognitively, meaning stimulated um, intellectually, emotionally, physically. And the stimulation or sensation hunger is <clears throat> something that that would give that would be satisfied when we have a very good conversation when we have a lot to do when we put a lot of um, information in our brain if we are cognitive person uh, it's something that we crave if we uh, are very physical person so that we need to exercise I'm sorry I'm just looking at the chat because people say something. So, um, and at work, we need the stimulus hunger to be fed because if it's not, if it's lack of stimulus, if we work in a cubicle and we, and everything is in the same color and uh, every day is the same as it was previous and we don't really speak a lot, a lot with our coworkers and not much is happening for us not necessarily for others, but for us. And we might quite fast become withdrawn or not interested anymore, or it leads to depression. And it even leads to burnout because it is very likely that we will try to substitute this hunger with something else in the, in the extreme. So in this, in this um, paper that you got there, you have the, the scale that I just thought it's, um, it's something you can go to and think about what would be you as a person in general now in this time of your life, not, not think about who you were 10 years ago or stuff because we change constantly and our lifestyle changes and our needs changes as well. So think about right now in this moment, in general, how much stimulus do I need as a person? Am I low stimulus person or am I high stimulus person? What do I prefer? Do, do I prefer to, to work in a very um, quiet environment in everything is more or less um, tied up? I don't have messy, messy desk. Uh, do I like to focus on one thing and then another thing, so less stimulus? Or do I work in a very messy or colorful desk? Or do I like to listen to music while I work? Do I, I, I'm not bothered if people come to interrupt me while I work and so on. So that would be high stimulus. So just think in general, think about it where you stand. I put it the scale from zero to 10, it's totally yours, but just, ask yourself what for me would be zero and what would be 10, because only then you can put yourself somewhere on the scale, because scale itself doesn't say anything because 10 for me is something else as it is 10 for you. Yeah, so this is for you, for your assessment. So think about this and I highly recommend you to put down, not, not the number, put down the scale, because it is more visual and more tangible and memorable. So this is in general. And then think about your work environment at the moment and assess where are you in this matter in, in reality. And so you can see if there is a lack of stimulus for you in your working environment. And that might be something that is demotivating you. Or the opposite, it can be too much stimulus going on, too much of everything, too much of meetings, too much of people, too much information, too much tasks. And then 
you know, it's wearing you out and you slowly withdraw or you slowly start to find ways to demotivate yourself because it's too much of everything. And this too much and too less, too less, too less, not too much, is actually very, very individual thing. Nobody else can say this is too much, this is not too much. So that's why you really have to assess yourself what for you is too much and what for you is not too much in this moment. Yeah, because you know, things change. When we get kids, immediately the stimulus somehow is pushed up the, up the ladder and we get to use to have more work in, in more stimulating environment, maybe. So another hunger, he said, uh, he noticed is the structure hunger. And meaning that some people like to have more structure environment. So we talk about working environment here, although this applies to all aspects of our lives in every role. So you can easily think about this uh, approach in other roles as well. But today we were going to talk about the, uh, the working environment. So the, the structure hunger is how much structure do I need to um, function optimally, to be at my best? And which things do I need to structure? So do I need to structure my time? Do I need to structure um, the, the rules around Am I allowed to be interrupted when I work? Or how much structure do I need when I get some tests? When somebody tells me what to do, do I need them to tell me in details? Or do, they, do I need them to tell me just briefly? And then I structure my activity to do that test by myself. So all these things, how I structure, uh, for example, my, uh, my environment that I work with in. So, Again, assess in the general, in this moment, in this period of your life, how much structure do you need in working environment? Uh, and be taken into consideration that sometimes maybe if we have lack of structure in our private lives, we might have the tendency to have more structure in working life. But we need to have the balance so we don't you know, do the substitutes because it usually doesn't work out. So think about how much structure I need and then really go into evaluation, how much structure do I really get? Or how much structure is it possible for me to get? Um, and how do I do that? How do I communicate with my coworkers about it? And how do I recognize those hungers and needs in my team if I'm a leader in my coworkers? So that I, as a leader of the team, can um, arrange the working environment that will most support, you know, their capacity and talents to, to actually come out because everybody has different needs and we can most certainly not, not arrange the same working environment for everybody because for some works better, for some not. And then we lose the capacity of talents that we work with. So think what can be, um, can be done, what's, what's possible, because of course we don't live in a fairy tale, so it's not everything, it's not always possible. And how, what do you need to adapt to still maximize and to adapt to your best working experience? And the other is a highly important recognition hunger or recognition psychological needs, which is so, so, um, discounted because we have a huge, as a society, we have a huge problems with uh, praising, with stroking, with giving recognitions to ourselves and to others, our coworkers, people in our lives, and even more to accept recognitions. So we all were born with some sort of recognition hunger because the infant, if it doesn't get the recognition that somebody recognizes him, that it's okay to exist, it will develop much, much poorly in, in, um, in every manner actually, 
as the infants who get a lot of recognitions on their existence. And there was a lot of studies that uh, they did with the or orphanage children and infants. So the recognition is not just, so, and that stays with us throughout our life. As an adult, we need to be praised. We need somebody to tell us that we did a good job, that um, uh, what we said is right, it's important, or the recognition to exist, that somebody gives us a nice good morning, that somebody opens the door for us, that somebody just smiles at us. This is all the recognitions that you know, unconsciously throughout the day would pour in and makes us feel better about ourselves, about others, and about the world. And this impacts directly our motivation altogether. How we feel about ourselves is mainly where motivation comes from. And the recognition hunger, let me just be mindful of time. Okay. The recognition is also something that you have on this on this downloaded paper, as a, as a, we somehow uh, inherited some cultural rules around stroking each other and ourselves. And I want to go through this briefly, really briefly, because I think it's very important. Mm, so we have learned that we don't give strokes to ourselves. In Slovenia, we have a saying, um, self-praise rolls through the table or under the table or something like that. So there is something like something really uh, is not okay if we recognize ourselves, praise ourselves. Yeah, and this is, it's, it's, it's of course it's wrong because as an adult authentic genuine, Genu genuine recognition is very important so that I feel good about myself. And there is no way that other people will give me enough recognition if I will not feel good about myself to accept it. Because there is another rule, cultural rule, don't accept the positive strokes uh, when you're given. So we are somehow taught that if somebody on their own just give us some stroke, we'd say, um, I'm not sure, That's, they're just saying that. But we are also taught at the same time that we don't ask for recognition. And when we ask for a stroke, we feel pathetic or like fishing for compliments or um, if we have to ask for a stroke, it's usually not, not being um, genuine. And it, it, we, we don't discount the word of that stroke. And then we have don't give strokes when you have one to give. Like how often do you realize you want to say something nice about the person somewhere around you and you just don't. And we just don't for some reason. And for probably the reasons or those cultural interlocks because we don't accept because it's worthless if somebody just says the, the, the recognitions and so on. So, and we have, um, we have another one that is uh, very much based on also connected to gender. Don't reject the strokes when you don't want them, especially the negative strokes. So if a, if a woman gets to be stroked on her appearance, she shouldn't um, reject this stroke. She should just, say, thank you. Well, no, I want to be recognized for what I did, not how I look like in this moment. But it's kind of, I'm polite to do that in regular conversations, or it goes the same for men. They want to be, I don't know, recognized for how, how intuitive they are, but they get to be recognized only how intellectually or, I don't know, handy, 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 handy they are. So there is the whole cultural rules. It comes from, you know, preparing, it, it comes from belief that we have to prepare our children for the real life. And in the real life, people don't praise just you around. And it's a circle goes around. So we are in 
huge um, depression of strokes and recognitions and pressure. And I really want to invite yourself to, to be aware around it and to think about it. When do I have a stroke to give to somebody? And then give it if it's genuine. And when somebody gives you a stroke, to really accept it and take it with you, like drive the car and think about it. Wow, that was really nice what the kindergarten teacher just said to me. That was so nice because we tend to discount it, just push it away. Like we find a way in our mental process because of this, this uh, uh, unconscious beliefs that, that we find a way to discount it. It's not important. Oh, this dress, ah, it's old, it's not new. Oh, me, no, you know, and it's wrong because it doesn't make us more capable, uh, more, uh, not strong, but more motivated, more powerful, but it makes us less powerful and less self-believed and so on. So think about the recognitions, think about how much recognition do you need and scale it somewhere. And think about how much recognition do I get in my working environment? Do people who I work with really recognize for my work or for what I do or for who I am? Do I recognize for people I work with what they do and how they do it and who they are? And pay meticulous attention when you are talking about something that somebody did, like something positive, or when you are publicly speaking, to give the recognition to the person that this work belongs. Don't own it through your organization. Of course, you can own it within your organization, but you have to make sure that what a person did gets to be recognized publicly as well if the situation is like that. Um, because this gives so much motivation to people that they come back to their offices or working environment and they just pull something so much better the next time. Recognition goes a long, long way. So ask people also to be recognized. It's not fishing for compliments. You know, this is when we see when somebody like a child is fishing for a compliment, it's, it's autopilot, it's not authentic. And of course, we don't have to respond to that. But if you have a, you, you as an adult, ask another person to tell you that you did something good because today I feel so lousy and I need you to tell me why am I here? What am I, what is my contribution here? You know, we need that. The day, those days comes and we need that in, on a daily basis. And so think about it, where are you impacting others and where are you impacting yourself, considering that, and then see what can be done. And so thinking about those three, stimulus hunger, so get enough stimulus for yourself or decrease the stimulus if you are in environment that, that stimulates you too much. Um, check your structure when the motivation wears out, when you want to give up, when the agitation comes, frustration. Check your hungers, check your structure, how my day looks like, how my rituals looks like. Do I get enough uh, private roles? Do I have to be, do I get to be a friend enough as I want to be, and so on. And check the recognitions. Check where you stand, who is giving it to, to you, and how are they given to you, and accept them. And just keep in mind to sit with, with recognition that you receive. Because recognition is, is it's a small thing as well, and it's nonverbal as well. And we tend to so easily just forget about it in, in the next second that it happened. And it, it gives a really, really makes us feel good about ourselves and others. And this is being in um, I'm okay, you're okay position, which is the only position where we can be creative from. 
Um, yeah, so this checklist is for you to remind what we are talking about today so that you can go back and you can actually do this exercise. It's not even an exercise. It's just something you should keep in mind. I mean, you should. It would be, I recommend you, I invite you to keep in mind because it will very often, it will be one of the checkpoints where you can go and see, ah, okay, I can manage that. I can help myself a little bit to feel better or to gain energy or to, to, to gain willingness and inspiration. Um, yeah. And what I wanted to stress out as well, because it is the, the women, the women, um, we are women here. Um, so more and more after COVID, the soft skills became so popular in, in every aspect. And what I want to say is the soft skill, I so don't like to use the word soft skills because soft, it's in our brain connected to being weak. Somehow the soft material, it's weaker material, it breaks easily. So the soft skills are somehow connected to women. So don't use soft skills because our brain do magical tricks on us all the time and connect things and then we get biased and we have no idea why we have this kind of positioning of ourselves. Use the social skills, the psychological skills or whatever feels right for you um, because language matters a lot. And the, what I wanted to emphasize is that as we were brought up all over the world that in, in, a, in a mentality, boys don't cry, kind of stuff and if this is a weakness and it was the weakness for women the soft skills it's now the powerful thing to have the permission to have more permission than many men do to explore yourself to talk about how i feel and to explore those psychological skills on others that can bring us a lot of success if we know how to go around with it so use that power that that legacy that finally can pay off and be successful and i forgot to tell you that whenever you want to stop me and ask me just ask me so just ask me or or share whatever your thoughts are because there is never ever only one way to think about something and if you will not i will continue talking because i have so much to say Uh, okay, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Um, I wanted to ask something. Uh, it's really nice that you motivate us for diving deep and self-reflection. Uh, but what about finding recognition within ourselves, not asking from the environment? How do we motivate ourselves to continue even without those positive incentives from the environment? Yeah. Well, humans are very um, uh, social group species. We do not exist as individuals. We don't thrive as individuals. So um, there is, this is a, a combination. There is no way that I can recognize myself and nobody else does. And I will still keep recognizing myself. It doesn't work because we need to be important to somebody else as well. And this is with the infant story. So when the infant is born, needs to get the signal that it is important to somebody else that it exists. And of course, the signal that it will survive if it is important to somebody else, right? So we need recognition. And when somebody tells you, or we all do like, ah, oh, I don't care what other people think. We care so much what other people think, so much. It is, and we will never authentically think, uh, don't care what other people think. But it is important to think for ourselves, who are the people that I care about and in which role 
I might not care what my neighbor thinks about my work, but I do care what my neighbor thinks about my neighboring role, right? Or my boss. I don't think what my boss, for example, thinks about my mother role, but I do care. So, you know, we have people that we all, how will you not care what your child thinks of you or what your uh, spouse thinks of you or friends, you know? So it's interlocked. We cannot fit our hungers on our own because we are a group species and we cannot depend only on others. So the more we will get strokes from environment and stimulation, in recognition from the environment, the more we will be able to recognize ourselves and stroke ourselves genuinely. Not, you know, standing in front of the mirror and saying, I can do it, I can do it, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But really feel it, you know, I'm okay, you're okay. It's very good what I do. It's important what I do. It makes sense what I do. And I'm good at it, what I do. Or I did that good and so on. And assessing where you are first where you are and then you know how much you need to do and how to approach it and really those cultural rules be aware because i'm sure that every person gets you throughout the day so many recognitions that we just throw away and at the end of the day we just feel i'm such a loser and we might feel so good if we would account for those little little um strokes that we received from other people throughout the day. So yeah, it's it's a complexity. Yes, it Did is. I, does, does that make sense to yes, you? Yes, completely. Yes, it, it's a complex question. But as you said, you, you cannot just look in the mirror and those uh, say those affirmative words and just be good with yourself. But we have to find a balance, Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Well, now is the part where participants can ask their questions uh, to Melita so she could, she could answer or if you have any uh, story to share uh, in, uh, in those sense of uh, motivation, how do you deal with it? So if you, uh, if you want to ask a question, just uh, raise hand or just unmute yourself and ask the question. So, any volunteers now? Yes, I would ask one question. Um, I just found out today that in Austria from Monday on, we'll follow the lockdown again. So, yes. my question would be, how do we get our hungers met if we are kind of isolated or there is a lack of social life yeah thank you yeah it's really really hard so that's why i emphasized before it's a momental situation to assess to think about you cannot think this through one time and think okay this is where i am i'm all good i'm all set it's it's not everything changes so in this case, uh, what I do is, and what I invite you to do is to, to structure your day, to structure your time during the day, to structure your activities so that the day will somehow make sense at the end of the day. So, because if the day is the same all over the time and you have no idea if what did you do at one or four o'clock in the afternoon, then at the end of the day, we feel like we didn't do anything and the day just passed by. So the motivation in the morning to get up will be if you will approximately knew what the day will look like and that there is something to do this day. And then um, create some stimulus. If it's a lack of stimulus now being closed in, in, in your apartment or house, uh, consciously create some stimulus, organize some activities, maybe online if you live alone, if you live with somebody, with somebody, um, dress differently, don't be in sweatpants or in the same dresses every day, sometimes dress like you go out, sometimes like if you go to work, sometimes stay in sweatpants, but just fluctuate 
just take care that it's not every day it doesn't feel and look the same. And um, you know, find out what is your stimulus in this environment. Is it that you is it that you need to have a laugh with a TV show? Or is it that you need to exercise? Or is it that you need to dance in the apartment? Just whatever pushes you back to be motivated to continue the day, not to just stay in the couch or just to not having the willingness to do anything. So it's a very individual thing to think about, right? I, yeah, I can give you some thoughts, but you really, really think about and think about stimulus. What's stimulating me? What will stimulate me right now to continue? What gives me the power, the willingness to go, to go on? And then recognitions. It's, oh, in, with stimulus. If you live in a house full of kids or people, it's very likely you have too much stimulus around you. So make sure that you structure your time somewhere during the day that you can uh, separate if possible, of course, if possible, and hopefully it is possible to separate and to be somewhere where there is less, less stimulus, just to re re regenerate for a moment, okay? And recognition, lack of recognition comes with the being in less contact and around, surrounded with people. So pay even more attention to where we get this, the recognition. Somebody who calls me and asks me how I'm doing, it's a recognition. Somebody who brings me some food from the store, it's a recognition. Somebody who sends me a message, it's a recognition. So think, think about how in this environment I can adapt those hungers to the approximately satisfying level. Because otherwise we are just you know, drained and, or burned out at the end. Did that make sense? Yes, thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Melita. This is Gabriela speaking. And uh, what you said, it's very important. I think it's uh, structuring, I think it's very important in any situation. Structuring the day, especially when you have hard times, better times, good times. Uh, what I can add to it, if I may, is what helped me during this um, almost two years now or one year. I don't know. I, I don't recall it. And I don't count the time anymore. Yeah. Networking. I've, uh, you know, one of the good things, if there is, if there is one good, real good thing in the, in the pandemic times is the virtual space, the virtual environment. I've got in touch with so many wonderful people during this pandemic times. I've uh, managed to, uh, to go to master classes that I haven't done before, um, interconnected. If you're a woman entrepreneur, reach out to your network, to your association, to any initiative that you have in your city, in your region, uh, because there you will, especially, uh, you know, those initiatives that involve other women, other uh, women uh, in business or in any other profession, because we share the same burden. So for me, it was easier to talk to other women in the same position. They had to do all the domestic work and to do, to do their work uh, in the same time and to do everything together. So it helped me a lot to talk to like-minded people and to share. And just uh, for me in any situation, not only in the pandemics, in any um, problematic situation, just changing the perspective on it, yeah. it makes a huge difference. Melita to tell me, look at this in a different way, Gabriela. Maybe, maybe this will make better sense. I'm not saying that you should not listen to yourself or that you, sh you should go around and uh, you know, follow other people's opinion, but it's you know, changing perspective, changing the vision. On the, on, the, on the problems very, very often helped me uh, in difficult situation, especially now in these pandemic times. And what, uh, for me, pandemic times, it's not the lockdown, it's the fluctuation all the time, you know? There is a lockdown, then loosening it up, and then you really have to, you really have to, to be very flexible. So take it day by day, uh, have it structured, and, uh, you know, reach out, do, do things that you, you were not able to do before. Now in the virtual world, you can, you can do almost everything. I just wanted to add that to, 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 to the conversation and thank you. Thank you for the recognition part and for everything that you shared. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing this. And it totally translates to what we were talking about. So we go out to reach to other people. It's a huge recognition for us when somebody gives us you know, the attention that we belong somewhere because recognition is highly connected to belonging. We belong, somebody recognize our problem because they can say, oh yeah, me too. That means so much, normalizing what we go through. I, I have a lot of reflection groups where women come together. And the main thing is just to normalize. It's normal, I'm not the only one, it's, it's there. So yeah, it's, and this is recognition. Recognition to what I experience, it's recognized by somebody, by somebody else. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and I agree with that. I think that when we will somehow come out of this madness around what's happening, that the, the new opportunities are amazing. The global, this is globalization now. Yeah, exchanging people, social interactions instead of marketing stuff for product exchange between continents. Yeah, I, I enjoy it a lot as well. Yeah. Well, we have to enjoy the life in between, you know, <laughs> that, that's the beauty of living. I mean, uh, there will always be some, some crisis. Uh, yeah. For sure, we will have the environmental crisis for, 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 for a long time. Um, this crisis is a bit particular because a lot of uh, the health and uh, life of human beings are, 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 are in question. So it's, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit tough because I know, I almost, I know that so many people lost uh, family members, close friends. So it, it affects you at the end of the day very much more than, for instance, the other crisis, the financial crisis, and everything else. But in any case, we have to, we, we have to make the best of it. And that, that's why I enjoy, you know, being in a group like this. And I would, I would really much like to hear what the others said. I don't, don't take too much, too much space for myself, but I would like to hear what the others have to say, to share something. Uh, we don't even, we don't have to talk about problems only. Today is the 19th of November and we celebrate Women Entrepreneurship Day. So uh, it would be great if, if someone would also like to share something in that sense, what is happening in your region, what you're doing. Uh, if there is anything interesting today that we can, we can just jump in online and check it. We have a big summit. Uh, I'm I'm following it on the Facebook Live now, so it's simultaneous thing. <laughs> yeah. Do you okay. something yeah. in chat round? Yes, there is one question in chat. It's from Yona. Uh, she says hello. Thank you for your insights, Melita. Very valuable words. I think that sometimes we don't get recognition, even though we deserve it. In those moments, we should not care or bother a lot. It happens a lot in some countries and specific cultures. And maybe it depends on uh, what you consider right or wrong too. The most important thing is for us to believe in ourselves and the people we love uh, believe in us. Thank you, Yona Albania. Yeah, of course. We cannot make somebody um, compliment us, of course. But I think it's... We need to have a conversation around it so that we cultivate our ways, how we talk to each other and how we praise to each other and be aware of those recognition things. Because if we always just say, oh yeah, well, some cultures just don't, you know, especially for women, women tend to say, well, yeah, I'm not recognized by men. They don't stroke me at work. At some point, we just have to bring the conversation the discourse there so that eventually this changes in our conscious and unconscious minds. Yes, uh, as Gabriela said, we have to find positive in everything. And uh, in work-wise, when we feel discouraged and we do not get enough praise, maybe we should ask for it, not sometimes even literally. Uh, yeah. I, I, I deserve something I think I deserve so uh, the other side should say if you deserve it or not what they their thoughts sometimes we get so uh, self-observed that we do not uh, we are not objective of uh, certain matters so also the other opinion does matter and we should uh, hear it I really like the idea about uh, networking and uh, sharing LinkedIn profiles so Feel free to share your LinkedIn profile and connect with all of us. 
as uh, we said, networking is really important and reaching to all the people that are in pretty much the same situation as we are now. So is there any other question? Hi, I would like to ask something as well. I'm interested, how do women find you? How do women reach out to you? And also um, during these uh, programs and motivational uh, talks you have with them, how do you follow their progress? Can you share some uh, success story or something like yeah. this if it's not too personal, of course? Oh, no, no, no. Thank you for the question. <laughs> sure. Um, so I don't do just motivation. Motivation was just one thing that came up as a the whole complexity of things that we do so it's um what i do is a psychological and emotional so emotional support and psych psychological skills development and my emphasis is in on women entrepreneurs because i'm want to support um gender equality in on pay gap closing sometimes so, in some time so um what, what we do is uh, one thing is that I lead um, reflection groups where maximum six women would meet regularly for some period of time for maybe two hours and they bring whatever they bring it's bothering them at the moment and you know emotionally psychologically and this is exactly what Gabriela said it's it's intercultural group usually so you get to see the perspectives from completely different cultural backgrounds which gives you such a broaden frame of reference. Your view of the problem becomes broader and broader and broader. And the more you're exposed to that kind of activities, the more, um, the more capacity you have to approach the problems from broader perspectives, because we are scripted, we are still trained, right? So this is very beneficial. How I know is, basically because women just come into weeks and say hey i did that that was amazing i negotiated with men in south africa and it was great because i did it as we talked about and he couldn't tear me down into being a child in this conversation you know i stayed to be an adult in the conversation so this is how we measure or for example i work with leaders one-on-one -on -one consulting coaching and um, how to overcome these setbacks, uh, beliefs, uh, you know, family beliefs about women and success, women and money. Uh, what am I worth it? Am I okay? And all these things uh, about gender and things about, you know, how uh, realistic I am about what's going on with myself, with my company, with my team, and so on. Um, so latest success, for example, was I'm helping a founder in um, New Zealand. She's a startup and we worked for 10 months though, regularly. And at the end, she managed to, she went into second round of investment and she managed to get $1.8 million in, in investments and the investments are still coming. And this in October when we met was not even the wildest, wildest imagination for her because she could never see herself getting there. Wow, so, that's amazing. Yeah, it, 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 it is. And, and that's, the, that's my motivation, my recognition to continue, my stimulus to continue. Of course, of course. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing these experiences with us. Thank you. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I wanted to answer, I didn't completely answer your question. So it's also uh, the reflection group, the one-on-one -on -one conversations, the trainings and workshops, and um, actually any kind of connection is beneficial because I work on uh, my business plan. My, yeah, my business plan is social. So I always adapt my prices to the situation because the money shouldn't be on the way of women's success. And so I do not work for free anymore because I'm a woman and I tend to do that. And it's exactly the opposite of what I stand for. So, uh, but I really, really uh, contract, agree to 
almost anything that people can afford, but just to, to move forward, to do things, to, to know your mind, to explore yourself, to be bolder, to be braver, to get rid of those boundaries that are just not helpful and so on. And yeah, the measures, and you can reach me in all these websites <laughs> that you posted on chat. You're very welcome. Or if you have a community and you want to do something with women in community and you have very limited resources still, or you have a lot of money, still you support me as a woman entrepreneur. But in any case, reach out and we will have a conversation what we can do. And the results are actually, it's, I have not ever, never somebody come to me and say, this was total bullshit. This was not help. I mean, I, I, I have no idea why, why I spent this time here. I have never ever experienced that because what we do is really not, it's, it's very concrete. Like here, it was very concrete. Take piece of paper, think about it. Those are the three things you have to think about it and, and discover what's happening, right? Of course, the way to change is longer than one hour here, but what I do are concrete, things backed with academic studies and all that. Mm, yeah, so you're welcome to contact me anytime. Perfect, thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, Alita. Yes, it's really important to work on our mind as well as we try at least to work on our bodies. So it's not a taboo and uh, we should really in the professional life search for more solutions on uh, making improvement of ourselves. Uh, I wanted uh, to ask a question. I don't know if it's appropriate now, but uh, people tend to be motivated to um, uh, for the things they are good at. Uh, and uh, when it comes to getting out of the comfort zone, they get scared and demotivated for the things they they are not really good at, and things should be learned. So how do we deal with these situations? So again, if we look from that, why are we motivated at the things we are good at? Because we get recognition to it, at least from ourselves, because it's easy to structure work because we're good at and we know how to you know, test out those and manage this test. And we get stimulus because we're good at and right the result and every next step as long as we're good at stimulates us to do the next step and when this ends when we have to go out of our comfort zone uh, it's again different ways how to look at it and one of the ways to address the willingness and then the willingness comes in and the willingness so how much willingness do i have to really reach this goal that is further away from my motivation when my motivation wears out. And the willingness to reach these goals is, some studies show highly um, reconnected to how much this goal is aligned with my values. So the higher to the value this goal is, the more willingness I will have to do this comfortable stuff to come to the goal. And the lower, the, the less it is connected or it is connected to lower values that are not that important for us, the less motivated and willingly we will continue to go through the uncomfortable um, situations and times to get it. So it's also a good idea to think about, okay, if this is my goal, why this is my goal? Is it because it's really healthy? For example, exercising. This is such a everyday, so we all struggle with, I mean, most of us struggle with it. So is it because my value is health and do I do it really because I want to be healthy or do I do it because it's trendy or because somebody else told me to do it or because I know I should do it, but I really don't believe it's really helping my health because I don't really believe it's health, for example, right? So check it out. Why is this goal, why you set up this goal? And how is it connected to your values? Yeah, because, uh, so women tend to, um, I don't know the number, maybe you know it, how many percent of women would tend to, when they go in entrepreneurship, 
they want to do the social or impactful entrepreneurship, right? Because it's aligned with our values. So it's a, it's a higher number than men. Men would go out just to earn, to do the business and earn money. Business. Yeah. And women tend to much more open businesses and do something that's impactful and social. So, you know, this is something connected to values. And then um, this is what dri dri uh, drives us to do the unpaid work and paid work and volunteer work. Women don't do that in this moment. I have done so much volunteer work and I have never worked with a man who would just come for free to do the, I don't know, the workshop with me or, or something because it's connected to values. Yes, yes, it, it is, it is. So one way we, to look at it. Yeah. So do we have uh, any more questions? Okay, so I think that we've, okay, uh, just a comment. No, that's okay, it's not a question, it's not a problem at all. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think uh, we've come to the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you, Melita, for selflessly sharing your knowledge. I think it was really valuable session for all of us uh, that are in <laughs> somehow women entrepreneurship or women supporting entrepreneurship organizations. Uh, all of you uh, that participated, thank you once again. You can uh, reach uh, Melita through the uh, website we've shared. Uh, don't forget to fill in the form, the evaluation form, and also to register at the WeGate portal. Uh, there is also another comment. Thank you your, uh, for your insights, ladies, especially for Melita and WeGate for organizing the event from Ondea. So I hope that we will have uh, many more opportunities in the future uh, to make, uh, to organize events uh, for women entrepreneurs. Uh, thank you all for coming and uh, see you soon. Thank you all, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you, have a great day, bye bye. Bye bye. Can you